So the fact that it is Friday means it's time for a woman to woman video and I didn't do one last week because as I said I'm going to try and do them kind of once every um, other week rather than every week because I was kind of running out of topics and I thought it might get a bit boring and repetitive for you guys as well. So we're here doing one today and I asked on my Facebook page yesterday which one you would like to see first and the majority of votes said you wanted to see this topic which is plus size modelling and this is something that has been kind of in the news a lot this week and been at the kind of front of my mind a little bit more because it's been something that's been talked about and the basic idea with plus size modeling is always something that's confused me a little because we are in a world where models tend to be very very skinny and a lot of the time they're girls that are naturally like that and I understand that for couture fashion for example I understand why designers would like that type of look because they want to just show off the clothes they don't want kind of your feminine beauty and curves and things like that to be distracting from the clothes I understand that I know a lot of people have a bit of a problem with that personally I don't mind that I kind of look at it like art and I understand the need for that type of thing. That being said, um, it is very, very destructive because it only gives one rep representation and that's not what we need. The problem I don't think is necessarily with couture clothing and high-end designers because they're so far out of the normal woman's kind of um, reach, if that makes sense, that I don't feel like we're kind of aspiring to have a true representation in that department anyway, or me personally, but I do think it's very, very important on the high street and in kind of magazines and things like that to have a plus size um, model and just not even plus size but different representations of different sizes I think that's really important I'm not saying that I think that you know Chanel or Dior should have a plus size model showing off their clothing if that's not the image that they want to portray that doesn't bother me personally as much but I feel like it's important to be able to as I said represent loads of different types of society because we are all different sizes and as it goes in the UK the average woman is a size 14 I think in the US that's a size I think a size 6 in the US is a size 10 so a size 8 would be a 12 so a size 10 in the US would be a size 16. I'm not sure if that's how the US sizing works. I know in um, certain countries they go by like 38, 40, 42. So 42 is a size 14, but in the UK that is the average woman's size. And yet most models who are classed as plus size models are a size 12, which is actually smaller than the average size. Now it's difficult kind of when you're getting into average, what's average, what's normal, what's not, because obviously different things will seem normal to different people and you know if you're someone who is a certain size you might think that a size 12 is a good representation of being plus size or you might think that it's a small representation to me I don't think that a size 12 is really a true representation of a plus size because I think that if the average woman who is just average not even necessarily you know a larger woman who or a woman who is technically overweight is a size 14 then why is most a most kind of famous plus size models around a size 12 I just feel like it doesn't represent that correctly and if I was someone who shopped at plus size clothing store I would be slightly annoyed that the girl in the picture looking at me didn't represent a true representation just how if I go into Zara and the model's totally, you know, skin and bones, I do kind of feel a bit like, well, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to look like that wearing that because it's just not a real representation. And I'm not kind of creating a debate of is a size 12 plus size or not because there's different opinions on that. You might think it is. I personally, like I said, don't think that a plus, uh, that size 12 is a plus size. Um, and sizing is so, so, so obscene these days. I bought a jumper in Primark yesterday and it was just a kind of v-neck navy jumper. I just wanted like a plain one to wear with jeans and layer up and things like that. And I wanted it to be loose and I bought it in a size 18 and I'm a size 10 so I bought it eight sizes bigger than what I needed. And it's very small. It's a very, very small size 18 and I just feel like it can create so much confusion and so much more problems for women um, 
when we're doing it that way, I mean, I'm not going to get into the whole debate of sizing and whether or not it should be regulated and that kind of thing, because that's probably another topic. But I feel like it's just incredibly confusing and that the the lighting in this video has gone really weird, hasn't it? It's because it's really, really dark outside and I've got the lights on. But it's just a very weird topic and very... I don't know, because, see, by fashion standards, somebody like Christina Hendricks, for example would be classed as plus size. Now, Christina Hendricks is very curvy. I wouldn't say that she is kind of a larger lady. I'd just say she was kind of curvier. But someone like Kelly Brook, for example, who is a size 12, that would also be classed as plus size. To me, Kelly Brook is curvy but slim. And I'm not trying to say that, you know, if you are plus size, then you should be a much bigger person but I just don't think that that is a true representation of what plus sizing is and if you are somebody who wears you know like a fabulous size 18 or size 20 and you've got a model who's a size 12 in the pictures in the shops that you go into it's just the same as if you're a size 10 and you go into a shop and the model's a size 4 it just doesn't really match up and I really really wish that more shops and more advertising campaigns would just get on track with making a broader spectrum so for example you know like most of my friends are a size 8 10 and 12 that's kind of most of the sizes of most of the girls I know I do know girls that are much skinnier than that I do know girls that are bigger than that but that's kind of the average sizing I've not ever gone into a shop and looked at the picture in the model and been able to say yeah she's probably a size 10 and felt that they have like a body image that you can relate to and in normal shops I feel that that is important I don't feel that it's as important for example in like I said you know Vogue and um magazines like that and high-end fashion because to me as someone who really loves fashion that's a little bit of a fantasy world and I don't hold that to the same standards as I do the real world if that makes sense in any way but I think that kind of the fact that these problems are happening just goes to show how we are really ruining what real women need to think should think that they need to look like if that makes sense we should all kind of be comfortable enough and by portraying a certain image you're making certain groups of people not feel comfortable about that and i just i find it a very very confusing topic and I feel like even when you kind of look at advertising campaigns, I think Marks and Spencers did one a while ago where they used models who were larger. Um, I just feel like it's not done in the most sincere way and I really wish it was. I think that it would be great to see. I remember a couple of years back Debenhams were doing um, mannequins that were in all different sizes and I thought that was great because you should be able to kind of feel like you can relate to that and it's a very, very important um, message to younger people as well in that you know we can all be different you don't all have to look like the perfect size 8 and it's something that really bothers me personally and doesn't bother that many other people that I know and I kind of find that a bit confusing because I can say this to people and some of my friends will kind of look at me and think what are you talking about you know like it doesn't concern you you're not plus size but it does because it's the same. It's the same as, you know, having a model who's a size six be in a Topshop campaign when you know that you could never ever fit into a size six. It's just a little bit dishonest and confusing to me. But um, yeah, I think that's kind of all the points I wanted to get across. And I don't know, I've been thinking a lot about it lately. So the next video I'm going to do is, like I said, about friendship and. Um, body image because I've had quite a few weird incidents with that lately so I will be doing that um, in next Friday's video but I hope you enjoyed this video I'd love to know what you think about this and um, if you feel like it's a problem or not I was researching online a little bit before doing this and if you go onto most plus size um, modeling websites they all say that they start at size 12 and to me that's just a little bit ridiculous because Maybe it's just dubbing it plus size that's the problem, I don't know, but you know, like I said, I'm a size 10 and the odd time I can probably fit into a size 12, 
but I don't think that I would have to go into a plus size modeling agency um, and they could put me in a campaign for a plus size store that probably carries sizes from 14 upwards I just don't feel like it would be a true representation I think a size 12 is just like an in-between size and pretty average and not necessarily needing to go into one camp or another that's the problem we've got too many labels and too many camps but yeah I'd love to know what you think about this don't forget to give the video a big big big, big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you want me to do any other topics as well don't forget to suggest those in the comments below and I hope you'll have a fabulous weekend and I'll see you next time bye